Um, good evening again, it's uh, Nitro Fingers here. I've been thinking a lot recently about creating a larger scale application using Lua in Minecraft. Uh, one that's more about seeing the scale of the application that I can produce and its power more than just utilising the language for the simplest tool that I've built up until now. Uh, to that end, I've had a go at making uh, like a proper full scale, well integrated and, and well designed RPG uh, role playing game. I've created a fairly simple demo just of the engine that I've built. Um, along with a small town, a few dungeons, and three pre-scripted quests that all show off some of the features that the engine I've produced can, can do. So, let's give it a try. I should note, it's, it's very much pre-alpha, it's, it's not finished yet, but it's, um, it's, it's coming along, so... It's just a little warm-up quest to get you going, but um, we'll get to the proper stuff now. Okay. Um, I actually designed this game after uncovering a bit of tech that I wrote a couple of months ago that was about traversing 3D mazes in, in third person, what you're looking at right here, and now um, sort of thought I could play around with it and, and do something interesting with it, so I came up with this. If you remember who Richard Garrett is, um, or you're in your late... 70s or something by now, then you might remember a, a really old game called Ultima. And it was sort of the first real game, you know, like a proper experience that you could pick up and you could play it over and over. It had like a proper engaging world that you could you could sort of get lost in and, and, and learn and understand about and stuff like that. So sort of one of the first games that really did that. There we are. So, um... I actually picked it up for the cheap um, online a couple of months back, and I just hated it. It was just so irritating. The the combat was annoying. The magic was confusing. I still don't know how to trade with merchants. But the core was solid. The idea behind it was really interesting, and, and, and I think quite effective, so... So I thought I'd have a go at in using that as inspiration, at least, to try and help me out with this game here, so... much harder. I should note, um, this is by no stretch finished. A, a bug occurred just recently where the um, enemies weren't working correctly, so as a consequence the game's much harder now because they don't move. But I'll get there. It may kill me, but I'll get there. There we go. <sighs> 
and yeah you can see the mausoleum there has opened up nicely so I've seen um, a few attempts now at trying to make uh, an RPG using CC on the net but it's a really hard thing to do I don't think I've seen any that were actually finished yet and to be fair this one isn't finished either um, but I'm pretty happy with where it is so far Survive. You'll see a few limitations in the way the engine is designed, unfortunately. Um, with the, particularly the way the quests are done at the moment, there's no triggers and variables and things. That'll be in a later version, so that means you have to hear a few repetitive messages. Oh, oh, yeah. So that's it. There we are. Um, that's the demo that I've sort of produced. So, um, yep. Yeah. Sacklin or, or RPG, or whatever you like to call it. Um, so that's what I've sort of come up with. I'll show you a bit of the code now, particularly on the scripting side. Um, the EXE itself is now getting quite unwieldy. It's over fifteen hundred lines, so it's it's extremely long. Uh, this is just commenting variables and stuff, let alone the actual code itself. So, I mean, like I said, if you've had trouble understanding some of my code up until now, then you have got a snowman's chance in the Sahara of being able to figure this one out. Unfortunately, um, again, I said though, just like with everything else that I write and all my other code and things, there's nothing about this that's really that complicated. It's just there's a lot of it, and you, you have to be prepared to sort of go through it and understand it well. So, I mean, yes, yeah, so it's probably not worth worrying about too much. Um, where things get more interesting, however, is on the scripting side of things. Um, this is all governed by the scripts that I've written here that you can see them, um, and they're they're quite important. They're, they're quite interesting. So you can see here that we've got three, which is the script file itself, and then towns and then world. And each three of those define um, the things that produce the world itself. So we'll just take a look at the world first. And you can see it's just a simple ASCII file that you just you can just design your own thing here. Just draw it in with a simple art program. Very very easy to do. No troubles there. And oh, whoops, it's towns and. A similar situation with the castle here, you can just design that as however you want to. I just need to fit the dimensions of, this, of that I've provided here, however. Um, and have something similar to this at the top here. This town thing here just identifies it as a town. And um, this gives us its name, its coordinates um, in the world, and then here again, coordinates, but this is just coordinates of entrance screens and things like that. So, And then the script itself. Again, this is quite long, but it's much easier to understand. So, um, so essentially, the bulk of the game is actually sort of kept in here, and this is where we define things like the weapons. So, in the player's weapon is a dagger, if you're curious. Uh, his armor, he wears rags and sandals. And then the creatures in the game, and we just define things like their um, their power, their length, their level, their positions in the world, which is defined later on in the in the engine itself. The weapons they use, and then their appearance. Same with the snake here, and the wraith. 
uh, NPCs in the world, which is done here as well. You can provide them with names, jobs, positions, and levels, and stuff like that. And quests, this is probably what makes up the bulk of the most interesting part of the game here. So you can see here that we've actually defined things like the um, the names of the quests, and then each individual stage, which in turn has conditions that can be passed. And we use the things like here, for example, display confirm message, which is like the dialogue options you'll see there where um, you'll, you'll have Kirsch will say that he needs someone else to pay his debts. Uh, same here as well. But you can use other things with the conditions as well. In this example here, I've actually used a few different things. So in this dungeon, this is where um, the player will actually see various things around the dungeon will sort of teach him clues about what's within it as well. So you can use this to sort of create puzzles and things too, if you want the dungeon to be more complicated, which is always great, I reckon, in, in RPGs, I reckon it's a great thing to have, so. And the same thing here as well. You can change dialogues and quests and things here as well, so that way you can make sure that you, you can give NPCs one quest up the other and actually update according to events in the world. So, I mean, for example, Kershaw here will um, be frightened when um, Shadow Emilius' quest is activated, which is just as well, because it's a, be a pretty frightening thing. And then near the bottom of the code here, we'll have the dungeons, where we define their position things, as well as their actual maps. Now, I usually use Notepad++, but this is ironically much easier to do in um, the edit function here, because of the, yeah, the maps are much easier to see, so you can see how they're structured there. Um, just a simple ASCII map. And then I've just added a few standard creatures. These are the, um, the turrets that appear. Um, that I've given them the special things. They don't spawn by default, only snakes and rats spawn by default. And then here I've added the wraith, which is your level boss at the end of the game part three here. That's it, really. That's all there is to it. So, I mean, there's nothing that tricky, that complicated in there. Again, I know it looks as though there is, but there really isn't. It's just a matter of, of reading through it and having a go at it. And you can see here, the, the, I mean, the really big thing is that, um, I mean, making a new RPG in this game is not about rewriting a brand new program. In fact, it's really just about um, checking the scripts, rewriting the scripts, then copying the EXE over, and the game will just run whatever's in the script there as well. It only requires a few changes, and you can just copy the ones that there are already. So, I mean, making an RPG from scratch again would be a very, very easy task. So it's it's you know it's pretty cool. It's a it's it's a it's a proper proper RPG engine if you, if you like. So that's all there too. Uh, now I've got more um more work to do on this game, and I'll probably post another video, we'll sort of see how we go, uh, it's sort of, it, with, with things as it goes, but um, one of the biggest detractors right now, as you can probably spot already, is the graphics. My Wraith isn't quite as frightening as perhaps it should be, and I, I'm just, I'm not an artist, I never pretend to be an artist or anything like that, so, I mean, if you're if you're keen on doing a bit of ASCII art, I would love to hear from you um, in designing a few monsters and levels for the game, so, you know, send me an email via YouTube and stuff like that, I'd love to hear from you, that'd be fantastic. If, um, but I mean, besides that, that's that's really it for me. If you've ever wondered um, ha where the where the limits are in computer craft and how far you can push it, I've I've had a go at see, trying to see how much the language can take, and I don't think I've even come close to discovering the the full full length of the language. So, to be honest, you know, if you've if you've got an idea and you've got a dream and you've got a bit of know how and some 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 work ethic, then you know, go for it, give it a try. I I'm almost certain that as long as you put in the effort, um, follow your imagination and work hard, there's no limit to what you can achieve. So yeah, best of luck. Hopefully you found this useful.